dialyzer reaction jargons. You have type A and type B first use syndromes. Type A occurs 15 minutes after HD start, believed due to IgE activates mast cells. Patient presents with dyspnea, impending doom, hypotension, and sometimes arrest. You have to stop HD immediately and don't return blood to the patient. Type P, however, is a less severe one due to complement activation occurs about 20 to 40 minutes after HD start. It's less severe with back pain, itching, sometimes hypotension. You may continue treatment here and symptoms usually resolve within one hour. ACE inhibitors and AN69 filters can cause similar effects. Other dialysis related or associated reactions, keep those four in mind. The filter reuse occurs 30 minutes after HD start due to endotoxins. Usually many patients in the dialysis units experience fever, chills, and malaise. The well water contamination by nitrates Patients present with headache, dyspnea, and cyanosis, gray skin, like methemoglobinemia. You have to hospitalize and give IV methylen blue. Air embolism, foam in the circulation, chest pain and dyspnea, loss of consciousness, seizures. Patients usually improve after 100% of oxygen been administered. This is usually one patient in, in the unit. You have to place them in the left lateral decubitus position to trap air in the right ventricular apex. Lastly, the hepatotoxicity. Oxygen drops to 90% about two hours after initiation of dialysis, and this is due to cyanotoxin poisoning, usually contamination by facility river agriculture and farm water. Patient presents with headache, eye pain, blurry vision, nausea, vomiting, and muscle weakness. Treatment is supportive. So type A, type B dialyzer reactions. These are the first use syndromes. One is type A is severe, B is less severe, and then the four others, the filter reuse and improper sterilization, the well water contamination by nitrates, keywords of the methemoglobinemia, and you give IV methylene blue to treat that, air embolism, and hepatotoxicity. Carbon filter it removes chloramine, chlorine, which causes usually acute hemolysis. Patient presents with chest pain, shortness of breath, methemoglobinemia, EPO resistance, and RO or reverse osmosis damage. What's the softener? exchanges calcium and mag for sodium. You have to descale it regularly to prolong the RO lifespan. Reverse osmosis removes everything, metals, salts, chemicals, bacteria, endotoxins, viruses, and most importantly, the fluorine. This is the mainstay of water purification. Deionizer exchanges hydrogen ion for cation, causes fluoride removal. If fails, causes fatal fluoride toxicity. Fluoride toxicity causes osteomalacia, you have to maintain the water fluoride level less than 0.2 parts per million. Fluoride removed by RO, then by the deionization. Endotoxin filter removes bacteria and endotoxins. As previously mentioned, bacteria and endotoxins causing fever, chills, rigors, and hypotension in patients in dialysis unit. Aluminium toxicity causes eporesistance, hyporesponsiveness, anemia and altered mental status. So we discussed the carbon filter, the softener, the RO, the ionizer, the endotoxin filter, and briefly spoke about aluminum toxicity. Dialysis monitoring. Usually you monitor daily the carbon filter, the softener, the RO system, and the deionizer. Weekly you do bacterial surveillance, monthly disinfection. What's the benefits of increasing the frequency of HD? You control the intradialytic hypertension and you improve the blood pressure. When you do frequent dialysis, the intradialytic hypertension decreases and you improve the blood pressure. Benefits of nocturnal HD, especially in pregnancy. So this is the best outcome for pregnancy, about 37 hours per week while keeping the BUN less than 48. You have to liberate diet for patients in the morning in order not to run into malnutrition. Simple steps of water purification and dialysis. You start with a carbon filter, softener, the RO reverse osmosis, the deionizer, bacteria and endotoxin retention filter. 